Have you ever been transported to a whimsical world of talking trees, magical flutes, and a mischievous dragon named Wichipu? If not, then the 1970 movie Puff of Stuff might just be the adventure you've been missing. This colorful and imaginative film, directed by Hollingsworth Morse, is a classic from the era brimming with unforgettable characters and catchy tunes that have charmed generations. Out of the many roles in this movie, which one was your favorite? Or when was the first time you watched this movie? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Now, let's dive into some random facts about the show. Huff Stuff was originally a television series created by Sid and Marty Croft before making its way to the big screen. The film showcases the escapades of young Jimmy and his magical talking flute, Freddy, as they land on the enchanting living island. But trouble arises when the wicked Wichipu attempts to steal Freddy for her own nefarious purposes. The movie is not just a delightful fantasy, but also a snapshot of the colorful and imaginative world of children's entertainment in the 1970s. It's a journey back in time that's worth taking. So, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Share your thoughts with us and keep the nostalgia alive. During the Living Island musical number in the 1970 movie Puff Stuff, there's a brief appearance of the image of the Earth and Van Allen radiation belts, used by Universal Pictures as its logo at the time. Universal Pictures distributed the film. This fact showcases a subtle connection between the movie and the studio behind its distribution. This moment in the film offers a glimpse of Universal Pictures' emblem, albeit without the Universal lettering. It's a noteworthy detail that highlights the collaboration between the movie and the studio. This connection between the visual element in the film and the film's distributor adds an interesting layer to the history of Puff and Stuff. Keep in mind that Puff and Stuff also marked the first collaboration between Norman Gimbel and Charles Fox, who later became Songwriter Hall of Fame inductees. After Puff and Stuff, they went on to write popular songs for TV and film, including hits like Killing Me Softly with His Song, and ready to take a chance again. This partnership played a significant role in the world of music and entertainment. In summary, the appearance of the Universal Pictures logo during the Living Island musical number in Puff and Stuff offers a unique connection between the movie and its distributor, Universal Pictures. Additionally, it marked the beginning of a successful partnership between Norman Gimbel and Charles Fox, leading to numerous popular songs in the world of TV and film. In the 1970 movie Puff and Stuff, there's an interesting tidbit that sheds light on one of the actor's feelings about the film. Jack Wilde, who played the lead role of Jimmy, didn't have much love for the songs in the movie, particularly if I could. He claimed to have a sore throat on the day he recorded it, and had some choice words for Martha Ray, who portrayed Wichipu, referring to her as a right old cow. This candid insight into Jack Wilde's experience with the film and his candid comments about his co-star adds a layer of authenticity to the behind-the-scenes dynamics of Puff Stuff. It's a reminder that not every actor's experience on a set is a rosy one, and sometimes, they are not afraid to voice their opinions. More so in Puff Stuff than Living Island, Jack Wilde is double-tracked, or more sounding like a crowd of Jack Wildes rather than the single person that he is. This unique audio technique used in the film adds an intriguing layer to Jack Wilde's performance as Jimmy. It's a subtle detail that showcases the creativity behind the scenes and how they work to bring the characters to life. Stay tuned for more insights into the 1970 movie Puff Stuff. Critically lambasted on its release as garbage by much of the press, the 1970 movie Puff and Stuff had a rough start. However, amidst the negative reviews, Cass Elliot's performance and singing managed to draw some praise. Elliot's captivating on-screen presence and her soulful voice provided a glimmer of brilliance in an otherwise poorly received film. This stark contrast between the overwhelmingly negative critical reception and Elliot's standout role in the movie brings to light the complex and often contradictory nature of art. Huff Stuff is a prime example of a work that, though initially dismissed, has found a dedicated cult following over the years, with some even hailing it as a cult classic. The film's unique blend of whimsy, psychedelic visuals, and catchy songs has given it a lasting appeal that goes beyond its initial reception. Whether you view it as an offbeat relic of the 1970s, 
or a hidden gem waiting to be rediscovered, puffed stuff undoubtedly occupies a distinctive place in cinematic history. Stay tuned for more insights into this unique movie from 1970 as we delve deeper into its production, its enduring charm, and the impact it had on popular culture. The story of Puff and Stuff is far more fascinating than the initial reviews suggest. In 1970, the movie Puff and Stuff was more than just a film adaptation of a popular TV series. It was an attempt by the producers to recoup the substantial costs of the original show. The TV series that inspired the movie had garnered high viewership, but it came with a hefty price tag. This film was their shot at making the numbers work. The story of Jimmy masquerading as the witch beetle adds an interesting twist. At that time, British accents were strongly associated with the Beatles in the minds of Americans. This unique choice in the movie reflects the pop culture of the era. But Puff and Stuff didn't stop at the big screen. Clips from the film found their way into the opening credits of Croft Superstars, an anthology series that featured reruns of various Sid and Marty Croft TV shows, including H.R. Puff and Stuff. This move added another layer of connection between the film and the beloved TV universe. So, Puff and Stuff wasn't just a film, it was a strategic move to balance the books, a reflection of the cultural landscape of its time, and a part of a broader TV legacy. This 1970 movie has a more intricate story than it might seem at first glance. Behind the smile, unraveling the hidden depression of Puff and Stuff's cast member in the world of vintage Hollywood, the 1970 movie Puff and Stuff is remembered for its whimsical charm and unique appeal. However, behind the scenes, one of its cast members harbored a deep and hidden struggle with depression. Amidst the colorful and surreal world of Puff and Stuff, this cast member maintained a public persona that concealed their private battles with depression. The bright lights of fame and the demands of the entertainment industry often overshadowed the personal struggles faced by actors. The untold story of this cast member's hidden depression sheds light on the darker side of celebrity life where the pressure to perform and maintain a public image can take a toll on an individual's mental well-being. In a time when mental health issues were often stigmatized and overlooked, this cast member's journey through depression serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of addressing mental health in the entertainment industry. Stay tuned for a closer look at this aspect of Puff Stuff and how it relates to the broader landscape of vintage Hollywood, where the weight of expectations and the need to put on a brave face could sometimes be overwhelming. As we bid adieu to the world of Puff and Stuff, a realm teeming with vibrant characters and whimsical adventures, I implore you to delve into the recesses of your memory and rekindle the embers of your personal connection with this iconic 1970 movie. For within its kaleidoscope of enchantment, there lies a tapestry of memories and emotions that have woven themselves into the fabric of your life. Perhaps you recall the sheer wonderment that overcame you as you journeyed alongside young Jimmy and his lovable dragon friend, H.R. Puff and Stuff, through the fantastical living island. The bewitching escapades, the quirky inhabitants, and the enduring theme of friendship are likely etched in the very core of your being, serving as a reminder that magic and camaraderie are not just the stuff of fantasy, but also the essence of our own existence. Now, I urge you to share your treasured memories and thoughts about Puff and Stuff. Whether it's a favorite scene that never fails to bring a smile to your face, a character who captured your heart, or a valuable life lesson gleaned from the movie's whimsical narrative, let your voice be heard. In doing so, you breathe life into the legacy of this cinematic gem, allowing it to continue enchanting the hearts and minds of new generations. Thank you for taking the time to explore your personal connection with Puff and Stuff. Your memories and insights are a testament to the enduring power of storytelling and its ability to unite us across time and space. Until we meet again in the world of creativity, stay enchanted, and remember, the magic of Puff and Stuff lives on through the memories we share.